Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be printing a 3D Benchy on my FLSUN Q5 3D printer. This is part of my video series on the FLSUN 3D printer. I'm new to 3D printing, so I'm learning and I'm sharing my experience. If you want to see my previous videos, you can find my FLSUN Q5 playlist in the description. I'll also put a link to this printer on Amazon, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So the 3D Benchy is a little boat you can print, and it's used for calibrating and testing your 3D printer. So if you go on Thingiverse and other sites like that that share 3D prints, you can find the Benchy on there. You may have trouble figuring out which one is the official Benchy. So you can go to this website, 3dbenchy.com, and if you go to download here and click 3D files, it will have links to all of these sites. So if you see this download 3D file, you have Thingiverse, UImage, all these different sites here. So you can make sure you have the correct one. So I'll click on Thingiverse. I'll click download all files and we'll start downloading. So other things on the 3D Benchy site to look at, if you go to about 3D Benchy, you can go to 3D print and this will tell you the settings you want to use. So we want a scale of one to one, layer height is 0.2 millimeters, infill is 10%, print speed is 50 millimeters per second, print speed travel is up to 150 millimeters per second, and print nozzle diameter is 0.4 millimeters. After you're done printing, you can go to Analyze, and it will tell different dimensions you can measure. So this is 23 millimeters. You can check for roundness. So you can go through this and see if your printer is printing properly. So this is done downloading. I'll go to my Downloads folder. I'll unzip the STL file. So we have different parts here. We have the full benchy down here. On a Mac you can type space while you have the file selected and it will bring up quick view which will allow you to look at it. I don't know if Windows has this capability. I imagine you could look at these in the Windows 3D software. So I'll open this up in Cura. So I'm not going to change the scaling on this. I'll go up to my settings here. Let me go to recommended mode first. So I'll turn supports off. I want infill at 10%. Layer height is 0.2. Okay, so now I'll go to custom. And I'm just going to scroll down here and look for the little circular arrow icon. And that'll tell me if anything is modified from the default. So I have the infill. I want that at 10%. I like to use infill before walls, but I'll do this for default for this print. I'm not going to change the print speed. Also, I have the retraction is different. So for build plate adhesion, I have skirt turned on, and that just prints a line around the print on the plate, and that just kind of clears the nozzle, makes it more consistent. Okay, so I think that's good. I'll slice it up. So it's going to take about an hour and it's going to cost me 25 cents in filament. I'll hit save. I'll save that out. Now I'm using OctoPrint and I have a video in my playlist on OctoPrint. So I'll open that up. I'll turn the printer on. I'll connect. I'll start it heating up. I'll type 200 for the tool and 60 for the bed. I'll hit these check boxes here. That'll start heating it up. I'll go down here and upload. Go to my downloads folder. I'm sorted by date modified, so it's at the bottom. I'll select that and hit choose for upload. So while this is heating up, I'm going to load filament into the printer. I'm using a glow in the dark filament. It's just because I have a lot of it. Okay, I have the filament in. I'm going to go to control here and I'll extrude like say 25 millimeters. I'm going to purge out the previous color. Did 
do that again. There's a little blue still in there. I'm going to leave it. It's fine. I'll make sure my time lapse is on. Okay. So I'll remove that filament I just extruded and then I'll start the print. Okay, I'll let that print and then I'll come back when it's finished and we'll take a look at it. Okay, the Benchy has finished printing. Had some blue filament in before and a little bit came through. I could have purged that out a little bit better. So I have a pair of calipers here. I'll put a link in the description of these two, although I don't necessarily endorse these over any other brand. These are just a cheap pair of digital calipers. So one thing to think about when you get cheap digital calipers is that they go through batteries pretty quickly. So this is an LR44 battery. So I usually keep the battery out if I'm not using them regularly. I'll be doing my measurements in millimeters. So I'm going to close it all the way and I'll zero it out. So I'm on that measure and calibrate screen I showed you earlier. Now I'm actually checking this, but I don't actually know how to even adjust it on this machine. So I guess I'm just seeing if it's in spec. So it says the bridge roof length is 23 millimeters. So I'll take that out. I'll measure this here. This is probably a more accurate way to measure. So we have 23.07 millimeters. That's pretty good. So the chimney is supposed to be seven millimeters. So we have 7.02. 6.96 and you want to measure in different dimensions the inside should be three millimeters this might be a little tricky to measure i'm going to stick this in here and open it up so we have 2.74 but i may not be getting the best measurement this may not be the best tool for this so the depth is 11 millimeters and this one i don't think i'm going to be able to measure no so you could take a piece of wire in there and mark it and then measure it that's one way to do it this thing the depth here doesn't go down that far. It's too wide. The overall length is supposed to be six millimeters. This is gonna be a little tricky to measure. Let's see. So I got 60.8. That was a little tricky to measure, but I think that's probably about right. I guess I could measure it like this. Well, you gotta see here, it, Recesses in there, and that does kind of sit up. I think it's on the ledge. Okay, so that's pretty accurate. Oops. 60.1. The width is 31. So we got about, it's kind of slippery there. 30.8, so that's pretty close. The vertical height there is 48 millimeters. 47.99. This area is 15 and a half. So we've got 15.59. So the cargo box is seven by nine. I don't know how well I can measure this, let's see. Okay, so we got seven, that's kind of right on. Here we got 7.96. Did I say seven by nine? It's seven by eight. There's a lot of numbers on the screen there. I think the depth is nine millimeters. So I'll stick that in here like so. And I got 9.12, that's off a little bit. Like this is supposed to be 12. So we got 12.06. And then we want this measurement here. So you can use the offset here to do that. It's 11.22. Is that the right measurement? Actually we got 10.75 and it's supposed to be 10.81. Okay, so we have the portal flange here. It's supposed to be 0.3 millimeters, so. 0.56, this is kind of hard to measure with this tool, at 0.4, and inside diameter is four millimeters. Got about 3.7 there. 3.7 there. 
So I don't know how much of that is actually this being off or my gauge being wrong. If you want to measure these accurately, you can get pins in like a set of pins in different sizes, they're gauge pins, and you could you know test it against that. So this front window is supposed to be nine and a half. Let me make sure I'm zeroed still. Ten and a half for this measurement. So that's about ten and a half. I don't have an easy way to get this measurement. So the rear window. Let's be about 12, that's 12.02, 12.35, and that's supposed to be nine. Let's try it this dimension, 8.87. So it's a little bit off there, and again, the depth on this is gonna be hard to do. That 0.41, I don't think that's super accurate. Then it has angles on here. I can't measure that with the caliper and the stern plate. I can barely see that stern plate, but it's supposed to have a little depth to it, I guess. 0.37, and it says it's supposed to be 0.1. I probably measured that wrong. So that's printing a Benchy out on an FL Sun Q5 3D printer. A lot of people will make this one of their first prints. I hadn't done it yet, so I wanted to try it. And it's pretty accurate for the most part. Some things are a little bit off. My measuring may not be perfect. It can be kind of tricky to use these calipers. But if you're curious as to the accuracy of this printer, and I've printed a number of prints with it, maybe a couple of dozen prints, um, you know, it seems pretty decent for a beginner 3D printer. I don't know that you're gonna make medical equipment with this or, you know, spaceship parts, but, you know, for a DIY hobbyist, it seems to be pretty good. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.